hello, good day, whether it's morning, afternoon, evening, or night when you're listening to this, mid-afternoon-ish here, depending on where we're at. Welcome to another episode of the Coffee with Coaches podcast. I'm your host, Kevin Stafford, and today I have with me Meg Rentschler. Did I get that right? You got it perfect. Rentschler. Yes. You gave me a pronunciation guide, which i oh, grateful every day for that. Thank you so much. Meg has been teaching and mentoring professional coaches since 2008. Meg has created and hosts a weekly talk show, The Star Coach Show, which we will get into here shortly, which offers guidance on skill and business development to coaches around the world. Big intro, kept it short. Meg, thank you so much for being on the podcast today. Thanks for inviting me. It's so much fun to spend time with other people who are interested in coaching. Well, let's start at the beginning, shall we? What prompted you to, to get into all this? What prompted you to start coaching as a pursuit? And then what start prompted you to start the, the Star Coach Show, your whole coaching practice? What are your, what's your origin story? <laughs> so when I began as a professional person, I was a therapist. Hmm. Uh, I was a therapist for about 20 years when I began to see a particular pattern that was occurring in, in my practice, which was more and more people were coming to therapy because they were completely overwhelmed in their workplaces. They were either feeling underappreciated, they were being asked to lead and they didn't have leadership skills, or they were being led by people who clearly didn't have leadership skills. <laughs> and, and very truthfully, Kevin, I started to experience burnout in people wanting to be put on disability, people just feeling like, you know, they would get kind of pulled together in their therapy session and then go back into the workplace and come back broken again. And, and, and I had been this therapist for all these years, but it, it was just this big up swing in that. So I thought I need to be more proactive. I need to do something different to protect my own sense of well-being, as well as to really create the kind of impact that I wanted in the world did research, found executive coaching, did an executive coaching program and, and transition. So that's sort of my origin. It's funny how it's, there's, there's, a, there's a commonality through every, every origin story with every coach I talk to where there's just, they're, they're doing, they're living their life. They're doing this, you know, they're, they're successful or professional and either people are like asking them for help or they're seeing the need where there's just like these, I, whether it's brought to them or, or they see it you identify. It's like this, something, something here needs to shift. And I think I can help. And that, that switch gets, gets flipped. And then, you know, yada, yada, yada. I did this. I did that. I moved into this. And then however many months or years later, we have these, these coaches, these, and I've, I'll expound on the virtues of coaching. I've fallen in love with the entire prospect over the last few years, but right. it's your, your story is both unique and also very common. It seems like this, that, right. that recognizing a need and a desire to serve and help. So key and, and doing it differently. So hmm. I certainly felt like I was helping as a therapist, but at some point the alignment wasn't there anymore. I, I was feeling as though, you know what, I need to come into the world in a different way and going into organizations and helping leadership teams be more effective and, and empowering their people. And, you know, that just was like, suddenly that lit me up. It was mm -hmm. almost, you know, the, the flame of the, that had burned so bright and being a therapist and, and feeling like that's what I wasn't supposed to do just sort of shifted. And then it's just like, okay, now I'm re in alignment again. And the energy's back and the focus is back. I love that word alignment that I think that I think that speaks very simply and very powerfully to what's happening because you could be exerting tremendous effort and, and have tremendous skill and ability. But if you're out of alignment, even just a little bit, sometimes all that effort and energy goes at least partially, if not wholly to waste. And that little shift that like you were talking about, it seems small. The shift itself is small, that little course correction, but the change and the power of it is so profound. Right. And it, it's, there was a risk to that, right? I mean, it was, let's invest in my training program. Let's find a training program that I really enjoy. Let, I had to let go of managed care contracts that I had been on for years that, you know, take a small act of Congress to get on. And then, you know, <laughs> like sending letters and saying, I'm, I'm going to remove myself from your network. Huge, like, and at the same time, just needed, just needed to happen. And I have not regretted it for a minute. Oh, that's beautiful. My pulse quickened just a little bit as you were describing that. Cause yeah, it's, it's a risk and you have to, yeah, you have to dis disentangle 
yourself yeah. from some things in order to get entangled in the things you want to be entangled in, you know? Exactly, exactly. Speaking of entanglement, let's talk about, let's talk about your programs, let's talk about your coaching. And you can interpret this word however you would like. I like to, I like to present the word unique. Uh, what mm -hmm. are you doing right now in your coaching practice or just in your business in general that you would say is unique? So I think as I, as I pondered this, what was unique to me was that the plan that I had set on, on you know, over 13 years ago, when I said, you know what, I'm going to do something different. I wanted to make an impact in the world by creating healthier work environments. Mm -hmm. uh, what I never expected was going to happen along the way was that I was going to be invited to teach coaches. So mm -hmm. as I was ending my executive coaching program, the director of the program asked to have coffee with me and said, I would love for you to create a cognitive coaching module for the program. And and then I began teaching and who would have thought that once again, I would have been lit up by the concept of helping other coaches bring their impact into the world. So through that, so I think what makes it unique is that I have this executive coaching offering that I just love. And a lot of that is helping coach, helping leaders be more effective by using coaching strategies in their leadership. But also, who would have thought that that ripple effect would have, so I wanted to create healthier work environments, one little person at a time, one little, you know, organization at a time. And instead, I get the opportunity to train over 100 coaches a year in the two different programs, because now I'm working in two programs. So they are bringing their impact into the world. And, and through that, that's where I started the Star Coach Show to create strategies, tools, and resources for coaches that was sort of created over when you train that many coaches a year, you get a lot of the same questions. You get a lot of that overwhelm of now that I'm out of the program, what do I do? <laughs> and I wanted to create a resource where they could learn from people who had walked before them, get access to great resources, learn about, you know, how do I stay, how do I stay strong in my skills, build my business and you know, what's the impact of coaching an organization? So all those mm -hmm. leadership things, those are sort of the three pillars of my show. And all of, I, had I thought, had I known that back in 2007, when I thought, you know what, maybe I don't want to be a therapist anymore. Maybe I want to be a coach. I had no idea. So I think that uniqueness of being able to blend both bringing coaching into organizations, but also helping other coaches really bring their trade forward strongly and have that impact is a unique aspect I hadn't expected to happen. Yeah, that's, that's, that's very unique. And I love the way that you're at, at multiple points in the entire like coaching journey where you, where you have the coaching experience yourself and you went through it yourself without a resource, like what you created with star coaching show with the star coach show. But then you also like, and I know this, I mean, it's, it reminds me of that saying who watches the watchman or whatever from whatever it's like who, who coaches the coaches, you know, who, right. who helps the coaches find their voices and acquire the skills they need, have the resources, the support really that yeah. they need to do their coaching. And it's such a, I mean, unique, but it's a powerful way to amplify your own, your own coaching practice and your own, your own abilities and to really help your, well, to really spread your message out in a much, much more effective and almost exponential way. It's, it's powerful. It's exciting. So I'll have sessions with, with coaches who I taught maybe three, four or five years ago, and they are doing these incredible things in the world. And I just keep thinking, oh my gosh, there's just another, it's like the light is just spreading everywhere. It's, it's, it, it really gets me excited. I know it sounds corny, but I'm like, it is so exciting. You have come to the right place. I, I am corny as pretty much professionally corny. I love it. I just, okay, good. and this, and this, this business, it just, it enthuses me every day. I get so much joy, just genuine joy that I don't have to, I barely have to work for it. All I have to do is just wake up in the morning and then show up. And I'm just like, oh, look at all these people I get to interact with and I get to help and who helped me. And it's just, yeah, it's, I, I will continue to be proudly corny. <laughs> about it is how amazing. It is. Yes. Well, good. I knew I landed in the right place. <laughs> let's talk about, let's talk about the present and the future. Yeah. Obviously it's been quite a roller coaster 18 months to put it mildly. Um, and a lot of coaches that I've spoken to have in various ways pivoted, but almost every coach I've spoken to, in fact, I think every coach I've spoken to has 
experienced a sort of a growth in not only what they're able to do, but also what they see on the horizon, what's coming next. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering what you have in store for the continued growth of your community of people you coach and also the coaches that you coach and the, and the star coaching show, just all of that. What's, what's now and what's next? <laughs> what's now and what's next? That's beautiful. <laughs> so what's now is that I am, you know, now I teach three courses at the university, which is the, and then at, and do all of my mentoring with, and the show is a great resource for that. But I'm going to take the experience for coaches to a deeper level and increase impact by opening a membership site where they will have access to live Q&A, do star power hours with some of their favorite guests where they come in and they are able to actually interact with some of the guests on the show where they have this community because boy, I hear coaches love coaching, but it can be isolating to be a solopreneur. Yeah. Even, even those coaches that are in partnerships can sometimes feel isolated and want more community. And I also have this for, for four years, years now, I've been asking every guest, give me a gold nugget question that doesn't go on the podcast, but is going to go to the membership community. Mm -hmm. So I've got this incredible library of awesomeness that nobody has had access to yet. So that's exciting. That's going to be, I'm creating a signature program to take into organizations and really help coaches or help leaders be more effective in their leadership through coaching. I currently train in hospitals, hospital leadership program to use coaching in their leadership style, but I'm, I'm amping that up and creating some additional programs to be able to help organizations. I will say it over and over again. I want to help organizations be healthier for their people. That's lovely. And yeah, it's, I, I asked you for like, so what's coming next? And like, you just launch into the laundry list because there's so much coming next. <laughs> it's, it's so exciting. And again, I, I, I constantly drift back into corniness and I just get so enthused about what, like what everyone's up to, like what you're up to. It's, it's just fantastic. Yeah. And I love that. I love that idea of a gold nugget question and just collecting these gold nuggets until you have like, you know, this pile, almost like a dragon yeah. word, so to speak. You exactly. Know? <laughs> exactly. We go. Before I close this out, because I could do this all day, quite frankly, this is it's great talking with you, but let's see. I like the idea of talking about the biggest challenges, whether it's a past challenge that you've overcome or something that you're currently thriving and striving through. What would you say the biggest challenge that you have faced or are facing as a coach is? Excuse me. Hmm. I would say that my biggest challenge right now is growing a team. And finding the right people to put in the right place so that the offerings that I have are really having the impact they have. Because as many a guest has told me, and I and my own coach has told me, because coaches should have coaches, not not shooting on everybody, but coaches should have coaches. <laughs> the, you know, people build businesses, not a person. So there are so many moving parts to have all the different things that, that I've talked about, I can imagine. And that, you know, you could see that there's, there's a lot going on there. And while I have some, you know, I've got a couple of VAs that do a couple of things for me and, and an editing team that helps with my podcast, really getting, building out the team and, and, and it's finding like, who's the right person and what do I want? You know, that that's probably my biggest challenge right now, moving it to the next level. That is very well said because it really is most skills, most skills can be taught or learned and, you know, abilities can be acquired, especially if you have the right, the right kind of mentality, but finding that right fit for your business and for your existing team, that's mm -hmm. really where the, where the power is, where if you, when you add the right person and for those of us who, who are listening, who've experienced this, it is one of the great joys of life when you find and then bring in the right person to your team and you just see the rising tide effect on everyone else around you. All of a sudden, everyone else is better at what they were already doing. This new person is just elevating everything else that's happening at the business. And it's, it really is, it's almost intoxicating how, how great it is. And so that's, I, I'm just like <laughs> looking for that intoxication. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> the next rising tide. There's one, one saying that I've, I've grown quite fond of that I came across a few years ago. If you want let me see if I get it right. If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. Oh, I like that. And I just really like how succinctly 
that gets at exactly what we've been talking about, how it's, it's not about, it's, it could be very isolating being a coach, it could be very isolating being a human being these days. Mm-hmm. Let's come together. Let's find any and all of the ways that we can to come together, to help each other and to grow together. Beautiful. Beautifully said. Oh, well, thank you for, is it corny if I say inspiring me? I feel, I feel oh, a I think that's beautiful. I feel like a little, a little inspired. Um, a little- where, before we go, where can people best find you online? Where would you like them to go? Hey, you know, check out the show at starcoachshow.com. LinkedIn, Meg Rentschler, Instagram, Meg Rentschler, but Rentschler is sort of a name I couldn't even say when I first met my husband. So <laughs> starcoachshow.com is probably the easiest place to start. Good place to start. Well, Meg, thank you so much for, for joining me today. I've had a lovely time talking with you. Thank you to the audience. I look around, they're not in the room, but you're out there. Thank you for being here. And we will talk to you soon. Thanks for having me.